So this is section 4.2, which is trigonometric functions of acute angles. We're going to talk about right triangle trig, two famous triangles, um, evaluating trigonometric functions with a calculator, common calculator errors, and then applications of right triangle trig. Okay, so the standard position of an angle um, is when the initial side of your angle is along the x-axis in the positive direction. So if the initial side is right here, we call that standard position. Okay, um, we'll talk about in the next lesson that this right here is called the initial side, and this is called the terminal side of your angle. Okay. So trig functions, which we've talked about in previous math classes. Um, so if we have a right triangle down here, so here's our right angle, um, theta could either be angle A or it could be angle B. So what you need to understand is that adjacent and opposite are relative to where your angle is located. So on this triangle, theta is right here, so that makes... Um, this side adjacent and that side opposite. The hypotenuse will always be the side that's opposite your right angle. Okay, so we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent, and then we have cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine, so it's hypotenuse over opposite, and then we have secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine, so it's hypotenuse over adjacent, hypotenuse over adjacent. Did I say that for cosecant? Cosecant's hypotenuse over opposite, secant's hypotenuse over adjacent, and cotangent's adjacent over opposite. So we use SOHCAHTOA SOHCAHTOA helps us remember um, those different trig ratios. So sine stands for opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent opposite over adjacent. So if you know those and you know that cosecant goes with sine, secant goes with cosine, and cotangent goes with tangent, then you're good. Okay, so first example, evaluating trigonometric functions of a 45 degree angle. So we're going to find all values of find the values of all six trig functions for an angle of 45 degrees. So if we can remember our special triangles, so our special triangles are 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90. So if you can remember the relationship between the sides, then it's easy to remember what your values of your trig functions are going to be. So for a 45, 45, 90, the two, side, the two legs are equal at 1, and then the hypotenuse is the square root of 2. So that means that sine of 45 is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so 1 over the square root of 2. And we don't want to ever have a square root in the denominator, so we want to rationalize the denominator, which means we multiply top and bottom by square root of 2. So that means we get square root of 2 over 2 for sine. Oops. Then for cosine, we know it's going to be the same because we know the two legs are the same. So it's going to be 1 over square root of 2, which is going to simplify to square root of 2 over 2. Tangent of 45 is opposite over adjacent, so it's 1 over 1, which is just 1. Then we have cosecant of 45. We're going to go back to what sine was, which was 1 over square root of 2, and we're just going to flip it. So that gives us square root of 2. Secant would be cosine flipped, which is also just square root of 2. And cotangent of 45 is 1 over 1 as well, so it's just 1. So we're going to do the same thing for example 2, which is evaluating trig functions of 60 degrees. So if we can remember the special, um, special 30, 60, 90 triangle, we know that the short leg is 1, the hypotenuse is double that, so it's 2, and then the long leg is square root of 3. So if we're finding sine of 60, that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so it'd be square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 60 is going to be adjacent to 60 degrees, so it'd be 1 over 2, 1 half. Tangent of 60 degrees 
is going to be um, opposite over adjacent, so square root of 3 over 1, which is just square root of 3. Cosecant of 60, so now we can just take all of our values and flip them. So this would be 2 over square root of 3, which we would multiply top and bottom by square root of 3, so it would be 2 square root of 3 over 3. Secant of 60 would be 2 over 1, which is just 2. And then cotangent of 60 would be 1 over square root of 3, which if we multiply top and bottom by square root of 3, we get square root of 3 over 3. Okay, so some common calculator errors when you're evaluating trig functions. So using the calculator in the wrong angle mode, this is huge. So you want to make sure that you're incorrectly either in degrees or radians. Um, using the inverse trig keys to calculate cos cotangent secant and cosecant. So these are not the inverse. These are the reciprocal. So if you use the inverse, so the inverse key would be if you had something like sine of theta equals 0.41. If you had something like that and you want to figure out what theta is equal to, then you would use the inverse of sine of 0.41 and that would give you the angle. Okay, so that's when you're going to use the inverse keys not to use to find cotangent secant or cosecant. What you're going to do on the calculator to find cotangent co secant and cosecant is you would first find, let's say you're trying to find cosecant. So let's try and say we're trying to find cosecant of um, 30. Okay, so what you would do is you would do sine of 30 first in the calculator, and then you would do 1 over what you get. So you would do 1 divided by sine of 30. That would give you your cosecant value. Okay. And then using function shorthand that the calculator does not recognize. So using something that the calculator is not seeing, not closing the parentheses. So all of those are things that um, can be an issue when you're using the calculator to evaluate. Okay, so this last example here, we're going to solve a right triangle. So it means when we solve, or solve any triangle, it means we're finding all the missing sides and all the missing angles. So... We can start with this one by finding the missing angle because we know one angle is 90 degrees, we know the other angle is 27 degrees, and we know a triangle has 180 degrees. So if we take 180 minus 27 minus 90, that's going to... So that means this angle down here is 63 degrees. Then we need to use trig to find side length C and side length B. So we could find one and then use the Pythagorean theorem, or we can use trig to find both. So I'm going to show you how to use trig for both of them. So let's start with side B, and I'm going to use the 27 degrees, and the reason I'm going to do that is because I found 63, and if I made a mistake, then that's going to cause me, the rest of my triangle to be wrong as well. So it's always a good idea to use the givens if you can. Um, if you need to use something that you calculated, that's um, if it's a necessity, you have to. But I would always, if you have the choice, use something that's given. So I am going to say, so if I look at 27 here, B is opposite and 6 is adjacent to um, 27 degrees. So opposite and adjacent mean I'm going to use tangent. So I'm going to say tangent of 27 is equal to B over 6. So then I can multiply both sides by 6. So I have 6 tangent of 27 equals b. I can type 6 tangent of 27 into the calculator, making sure I'm in degree mode. And I get that b is approximately 3.06. So I can write that down here. Okay, so now let's talk about how we can find c using trig and not Pythagorean theorem. So I am also going to use 27, and I'm going to use the side length 6 that we were given. So C is the hypotenuse. So I have adjacent, and I'm looking for the hypotenuse, so I would use cosine. So I'm going to say cosine of 27 equals 6 over C. C is in the denominator, 
So I need to get rid of it in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by C. So that would be C times cosine of 27 equals 6. Then I'm going to divide both sides by cosine of 27. So that gives me that C is approximately equal to 6.73. So we know that we've solved the triangle because we found all three sides and we know all three angles. Okay, so that is evaluating, um, finding all six trig functions of a right triangle.